So hi everyone and welcome to the second installment of the uh, But How Do It Know companion video series. Uh, in this video we'll be looking at uh, the NAND gate. So the NAND gate is really the foundation of um, the CPU and the design that uh, John builds. And uh, it's the first uh, electronic component and only actually that he introduces in the book. Everything else will be built up uh, using uh, these NAND gates. So the NAND gate is a simple device. It has two inputs, A uh, and B, and an output uh, uh, labeled C. Uh, there's also uh, uh, two other inputs to uh, power the, the gate. So you have your on and your off, which uh, in reality will be a voltage supply and uh, a ground. So in the rest of the book, these uh, inputs or this power supply is not uh, indicated uh, around the NAND gates but it's always there and in the real physical NAND gates you always need to power them to be able to use them and make sure they operate properly. So if we go ahead and look at the truth table for uh, a NAND gate uh, we will see that it's very simple and just as described in the book. So the output of a NAND gate is uh, basically uh, always on or on except when uh, both inputs A and B are themselves one and then the, the NAND gate switches to off. So uh, this truth table here is exactly like the one in the book. It uses zeros and ones instead of uh, ons and off but uh, it's basically the same thing. So what does a NAND gate uh, look like uh, in the real world? Well there are many uh, forms that an AND gate uh, can take, but the one we're going to be working with here looks like this. So this is a chip, uh, integrated circuit chip from the SN74HC uh, chip family manufactured by Texas Instruments. So uh, this chip has 14 uh, pins. Uh, two pins are used to power the chip, so uh, 5 volts and uh, ground. And uh, the other pins are connected to NAND gates, small NAND gates that are inside uh, the chip. So if we look at this diagram right here, we can have a better representation of what's going on inside. Uh, but ultimately, you have four uh, NAND gates whose uh, inputs and outputs are connected to the various pins uh, on the chip. So you uh, pins uh, one, two, three. Are connected to the first NAND gate, then 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, and 11, 12, and 13. So uh, I have a NAND gate uh, right here, uh, or, or uh, if you prefer uh, a NAND chip, uh, and uh, it is sitting on um, what's called a breadboard. So the breadboard is basically a uh, uh, a base on which you can uh, build prototypes using integrated circuits and uh, you connect your circuits to uh, the breadboard and each of these rows uh, are connected together and you can use this to hook up wires to uh, the different pins on your devices and complete your circuit. So before we can actually hook up this uh, this uh, 7400 chip and see uh, how it works we are going to have to build uh, a test bench or something that will allow us to uh, bring power to the uh, different inputs of the chip and to uh, visualize basically the output uh, so i'm going to build this right now and uh, i'll be right back all right so uh, i went and assembled uh, this uh, simple test bench and I'm going to go through it uh, with you guys and explain uh, what we have here. So first on the left we have this uh, device here which is a microcontroller so this is an Arduino uh, Nano and uh, this is what I'm going to be using to uh, power uh, the board. So uh, 
yeah, I, I like using Arduinos to do this because they're cheap, they're easy to find. I use them for other projects, and they're an easy way to uh, power uh, a breadboard when uh, you don't care too much about using uh, up a lot of space. So what's going to happen is here we're going to be connecting a USB cable, and it's going to bring uh, power to the Arduino, and the Arduino uh, can basically uh, allow you to connect to its power source through some of his uh, its pins here so there's a 5 volt pin that's here and a ground pin that's here so for each of these pins we've taken uh, uh, what's coming out and connecting it to one of these two power rails down here so the 5 volts we connected to the plus uh, line and the ground we connected to the minus line so this, what this does is give us access to our power and our ground all along uh, the side of our breadboard. And to be able to have access to the same thing on the outside here, uh, I've used two uh, wires here, a red one and a black one, to connect the power and the ground to this side as well. So now I have power on the both sides of my breadboard and I can power my uh, circuits uh, from there. So in the middle we have our NAND chip. Uh, as you can see I've connected pin 7 to the ground as indicated on the, uh, the schematic that we saw before. I also connected pin 14 up here to uh, the power. Uh, we can also see on the right uh, I have set up a LED here and uh, the LED is going to be what we're going to use to visualize basically the result of, uh, of uh, what's going on inside the NAND gate. So if uh, the, the output is uh, 1 or on, the LED will turn on and or else it should turn off. Uh, when you use a LED, you also need to use a resistor to make sure that your LED doesn't burn out. So here I have a 1K ohm resistor that's connected between the LED and the ground to make sure that it doesn't have too much uh, current going through the LED. And finally, I have hooked up the uh, input, if you want, of my LED to uh, pin 3 of uh, the uh, chip. Uh, and if we go back to the diagram that we saw before, we see that uh, the pin 3 is the output of the first NAND gate that is inside the chip. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, connect the inputs of uh, the gate to uh, ground on both sides. So now that we have everything connected properly, we are good to uh, to plug in uh, our circuit. So what do we see here? We see that the LED uh, is turned on. So if we refer to our through table, uh, we can see that this is as it should be, as you have uh, ground and ground, so, so zero and zero, or off and off, which should uh, result in uh, the output of uh, the NAND gate being on and the LED turning on. Now if I take this input here and put it high or put it to 1, we'll see that um, the NAND gate uh, still outputting uh, one value. We can even invert these two uh, inputs, so this one high and this one low. And uh, you see that the NAND gate uh, still turns on. And uh, if we bring both to high or both to one, which happened uh, uh, a bit by itself while I was reconnecting those, you can see that the NAND gate turns off. So we had, just as we expected, uh, the LED being on for all cases except when uh, both uh, inputs are high or are set to on. So now we can see that 
the NAND gate is behaving uh, as we expect. And now uh, we can use it in combination with other others to create more complicated circuits. And that's what we're going to be doing in the next video when we're going to build uh, an, uh, a NOT gate and an AND gate uh, using different combinations of NAND gates that are inside this chip. So uh, until then, uh, keep on reading uh, in the book until you reach that part and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.